Kavi Madani is a former deputy head of Iran's Department of Environment and has long raised the alarm over the country's looming water crisis. He's now the director of the United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health and joins us today. Welcome to DW. Now, how much of Iran's water crisis is caused by climate change and how much would you attribute to government mismanagement? Uh, when it comes to a single event, a single drought or a single failure, science advises us not to uh, attribute that to climate change. Uh, when, when, when we look at Iran's situation, we know Iran has been suffering from a uh, what we call a water bankruptcy problem, a chronic problem that was underlying and was putting a lot of pressure on the system and, and, and people. When we look at the long term, trends, we also see that climate change is playing a role, meaning that droughts are becoming more frequent, longer, and more intense. Um, so the drought right now cannot be dismissed. It's um, Right now, it's in sixth uh, year. It started, the new water year started in October. Um, this drought is paralyzing. It could have affected any system, um, but this um, made the situation worse. This house was already on fire because of mismanagement and, and drought is functioning as, a, as gasoline being added to the fire. Mm -hmm. Do you feel authorities in Iran fully grasp the urgency of the problem right now? It's hard not to grasp it when you see all the reservoirs are empty and, and when the president of the country comes and says that, that the city must be evacuated or the capital must be evacuated at some point, it seems that they understand that the problem is serious. It's, they finally understand that, but, but it's, um, uh, it's too late. And then the, the other problem is that this problem doesn't have um, short-term solutions, a problem that has been created because of decades of uh, mismanagement, lack of foresight, wrong strategic planning, and, and, and a, a wrong governance system, um, would not be solved through a few technological interventions. So right now, what can rescue the Iranians is uh, the generosity of the skies and, and more rain. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to pick up on what you mentioned there, that the president has warned that all of Tehran, that's almost 10 million people, may need to be evacuated because of these water shortages. Do you agree that this might be necessary? Um, evacuation of a metropolitan that is bigger, than, you know, has more than 15 million people is not easy, considering the fact that... Um, there aren't, I mean, other places are not any better. Where do you want to move people? And we don't have that in, in history, at, at least as far as I know, in recent history, that a city was evacuated or a capital because of the lack of water. Um, the Iranians have tried prolonging weekends and shutting down schools, um, office, government offices, um, days near the, the weekend, encouraging people to leave the city when they have had um, high air pollution episodes or, or, or high electricity demand. And that has worked because uh, when you only have a few days or a few weeks of water left, even saving for a few hours can be helpful. So partial evacuation or temporal evacuation can prolong the resistance of the city and delay the day zero where when this the, the taps would fully run dry um, until there is rain. The good thing is that uh, you know, some models are suggesting that um, within the next two weeks, there sh should be some rain. That that would not solve the problem, but can act as a pain, pain relief. Mm -hmm. You are saying that the only way to solve this crisis is rain. What is your view then on technological approaches like cloud seeding that we saw in our report? So the rain, when we are talking about rain, I'm, I'm, I'm just referring to the emergency situation in Tehran and avoiding day zero and, and, and hoping that, the, you know, finally the drought would be over and, and some relief would be um, given. That doesn't resolve the underlying issues and the, the underlying chronic problems that, that, that the country has had. That one has some long-term solutions, some, some, some solutions that are politically costly because um, they have to change the, the way they, they manage 
a water, you know, in the, fundamentally. But but interventions, there are interventions, technologic and 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 policy related. The interventions that are technologic normally have not helped the Iranians because there is a, a limit to growth. Cloud seeding is is a, a method that some desperate governments try and 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 stick to when when. Um, they're suffering in, in the most acute moments. Yeah. Um, they, they use that. It's, it's ineffective uh, to solve a, a water shortage problem. But at, yeah. at the point that you're very desperate, you would try anything. If all the conditions are right, which have, have not been um, the case so far, it can might actually help between 5 to 15 percent. That would certainly not solve Iran's water problems. Yeah. We'll have to leave it there. That was Kaveh Madani, director of the United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health. Thank you so much for those insights. Great speaking to you today.